Hello everyone and welcome to Fan Tech Corner. It has been a long time since my previous video with the NanoPi R5s, and in this video, I'm going to upgrade the firmware to the latest release. And after that, we are going to check out the throughput of the R5s and let's see if the device can handle at least 2.35 gigabit per second throughput, like what the R6s does. So. My current Lucy doesn't have a system upgrade image. As you can see, it doesn't have a play to upload the file. Therefore, I will need to use the friend WRT like instruction right here and upgrade the image with a micro SD card in order to install the firmware to the EMMC storage. There are lots of options and I prefer doing it with the eFlasher image. And I just need to write that image to the micro SD card, put off the device with the micro SD card, and it should be done. All right, so here is the download link. After you open it, it will point you to this one. So I will use Google Write. And let's see. So the latest release on December 5. And I'm not sure if this is the correct one or this is the latest release, but let's check it out. So let's go and guess the SD2 eMMC image. All right, so it is RK356A E Flasher. Let me see. Frame WRT21, frame WRT22. All right, so this is the image that I look for. So let's download it. So I will need to get a micro SD card to begin the system upgrade. All right, the download is ready, and now, and now let's open Rufus application again. So I have connected a micro SD card to my computer. Click the select button, and get this one RK three five six A flashers, and hit start. Okay, and let's wait for it. The file had been successfully returned to the micro edit card, and now let's remove it from the computer. After that, I will turn off the NanoPi as S. And then insert the micro SD card to the R5S. And lastly, I just need to connect the power cable. So I don't need a monitor or anything because the system upgrade should be automatically. Let's wait for around two to three minutes. And after that, we can turn off the device by unplug the power connector, remove the micro SD card, and after that, connect back the power cable to turn it on. I believe everything should be ready by now. So let's turn off the NanoPi R5S by remove the power cable. And after that, remove the micro SD card and connect back the power cable to turn it on. So we have the response and I believe that the RFIS should be updated to the latest release. So let's go to the home page and we need to accept everything. Alright, so the default the default the default password has been changed to password. Okay, and here we are it is friend WRT or open WRT22 running on the NanoPi R5S. In the default configuration, the one port is one gigabit. And what I want to do is that I'm going to remove, maybe let me see, let me go to the VLAN. So we have Ethernet 1 and 2. Now I will remove Ethernet 1, which is the 2.5 gigabit port from the bridge LAN. And after that, I'm going to change the one port of the router 
2 Ethernet 1 to make sure that I have a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. I will do the same for this one, IPv6. Alright, so Ethernet 1, save and then save and apply. And lastly, we just need to change the cable. Very good, we already have a working IPv4 address. So now let's go and make sure that the packet steering is enabled and we will proceed with the test. So as usual, we will have an NH connection to the routers at 192.168.2.1 and then route and the password. Very good, so it will be top and edge top. Alright, edge top not found, so let's update the package. Alright, so edge top and here we are. So at this current setup, the one port had been changed to Ethernet 1, which is a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, and the LAN port is also 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. So let's check it out what is the throughput that we have. So right now we can see that the packet steering is enabled, the network firewall, let's check it out. We have the shortwave flow of the link enabled and full connect enabled by default. So for the SQM QoS, everything is still disabled. So now let me go to 10.42.0.1 and then 3000 to check out the throughput. Let's go. Very good, we are running two. Very good, we are having 2400 Mpps for download. And let's see, we are also having around 2300 Mpps for upload as well, with the CPU at 47% idle and the lot is also on 4 cores of the CPU. So how about iPub3? Let's check it out. CD, C is an iPub3, and then I will run iPub3, that's iPub3, that's C, 10.42.0.1, P, maybe P4, and T, 20. So let's go. So with iPub3, we are also having 2.26 gigabit per second, and right now we are having four stream. So the CPU is at 49% idle, and the lot is on four cores of the CPU. So let's run the test again. But this time I will change it to P16 and let's check it out. And very good, we are still having 2.37 gigabit per second throughput with the CPU at let me see 43% idle. So it is a stable throughput and we don't have any problem at all. So let me run the test again, but this time will be a revert test. So this time we can see that the CPU consumption increase to around 65% and we have 35 or 36% CPU idle, but the NanoPi R5S managed to handle 3.37 gigabit per second. Alright, so let me try to turn off the shortwave offloading and the full connect on the R5S. And let's see if it can 
handle that's speed all right safe and apply so at usual let's check it out with open speed test first With the offloading and the full call not disabled, the RFIS can handle 1588 MPPS for download and for upload it can handle up to 1860 MPPS. So let me run the test again with IPUB3 and let's verify that. So T20, let's see. Still, we are having 2.34, 31 gigabit per second with a CPU at around 35% idle or 65% utilization. And after this one done, I will have a check with revert mode. Running the test in revert, I have 2.09 gigabit per second with no offloading at all so we can see that the performance or the throughput of the nanopi r5s has increased or has improved a lot compared to the previous video and just now we can see that the cpu utilization is really high it's got up to around 85 percent but the r5s managed to do 2.07 gigabit per second Alright, so that's it a quick throughput test with the NanoPi R5S on December 27th with FrontWRTs or OpenWRT 22.03. So it has been a huge improvement since the last test we done. So that will be all for this video and I hope it will be useful for you. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next one. Bye bye.